I definitely believe there's a one-size-fits-all diet with <clears throat> some minor modifications. Uh, each and every animal has a particular diet for that animal. For example, my cat is a carnivore, it's a meat eater. And uh, my dog's an omnivore, it can eat a lot of different things, but it basically has an omnivorous, uh, uh, an omnivore type of diet. Uh, birds, they live on fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. Uh, snakes eat rats. I mean, you know, each animal has a basic diet. The human being, likewise, has a diet intended for the human being that allows the human being to look, feel, and function its best. And that diet is a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables. And it's a cooked food diet, primarily. It's not a raw food diet. Now, yeah, sure, the human being can tolerate other things. They can live on candy bars and cakes and ice creams, and it survives. They can live on uh, alcohol, too and cigarettes, and it survives, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So yeah, the people are people, and there is a diet basic for people. Now there are some variations for certain people. They fall in a minority class. Some people have intolerances to high gluten foods, uh, mainly it's uh, celiac disease. There are some people who are allergic to certain kinds of vegetable proteins, and they have to avoid them. There's some people that aren't tolerant of uh, raw vegetables, particularly onions, green peppers, cucumbers, and radishes, and they get indigestion. There are people who have uh, kidney disease and liver disease, and they have to reduce their protein even more, say eating uh, much fewer beans, peas, and lentils. Uh, there are people who have severe hypertension, and they'll have to back, uh, back off on their salt intake, or if they have heart failure, they have to back off on their salt intake. So there are some small variations for a couple of percent of the population of people, but otherwise, the human diet, and still these people with variations, their diet is still the same. It's a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables. The problem is the food. The, the main health tip I'd give people is to change their diet. As far as getting people to do that, maybe that's the real question and really where we need to address the answer. It's not whether or not people will get well if they change. They do. But how do you get them to change? You know, what are the secrets to getting people to change their diet? Well, uh, one of the major secrets is to show them how good the food is and the fact that they can eat as much as they want of delicious food. And so when people initially hear about this message, they're afraid. They say that I'll have nothing to eat. I have to give up everything. But when you show them there's an alternative that's even more desirable, even more enjoyable than the foods that we were raised on, than the animal foods, when you teach them a diet based on starches like rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, and lentils, with fruits and vegetables and a little salt, a little simple sugar, uh, lots of flavorful spices, then you know they can make the dietary change. Uh, probably uh, uh, another really important, in fact definitely another really important uh, issue that people have to learn is that the diet is not a vegetarian diet, it's not a vegan diet, it's not a plant strong diet, it's not a plant food based diet, I mean it's all those things, sure it is, but that's not the focus that they need to think in terms of. What they need to think about is that this is a starch-based diet. When you say starch, you give them that key bit of information, then they can take action. They know what starches are. Starches are potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, rice, beans, peas, and lentils. So you tell them a starch-based diet, that's what they need to eat most of. And once you get people convinced of that, that their diet is starch, they are starch eaters. Another way of thinking about it is they are starchivores, just like cats are carnivores. And horses are herbivores. People are starchivores. So if you get that concept about starch across, then they do really well. And of course, the idea that you never have to be hungry is very, very important. And uh, it's a relief for people. It sets them free to get this, uh, the right kind of food in them. They get a sense of well-being. They get a sense of relief. They get rid of fear because they don't have to be hungry. They eat foods that uh, they're intended to eat. And they, the effect on the body is overwhelming. People who feel this is a sacrifice have to put it in perspective. I mean, how much of a sacrifice is it to spend $100,000 on bypass surgery? How much of a sacrifice is it to be confined to a wheelchair or bedridden because you have multiple sclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis? How much of a sacrifice is it uh, to get on an airplane and have to ask for a seatbelt extender because you're so fat? I mean, you have to think about things in the total perspective. You're suffering. You're paying a huge consequence right now as a consequence of uh, incorrect information and uh, unhealthy practices. So what I'd ask you to do is put it in perspective, think about uh, the overall impact it has on your life, and you'll find that this kind of dietary change is really nothing at all. You give up nothing but bad health and being overweight.